Hey, hey Jamie. Roger. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Good. Now you contact us regarding putting in a beehive. I did indeed. Yeah, we have a great vegetable garden over there and we want to have our own fresh local honey. Well, that's a good thing because I brought along bee expert Noah. Hi, Hi Noah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What do you look for when you come to a site, Noah? So some things we consider are the natural habitat of honeybees. They live in holes in trees, and they don't always have the luxury of picking where they're going to go mm -hmm. so much. Here we're looking at protection from wind. That's always a good thing. You've got a great embankment that helps mm -hmm. the wind go right up and over the hive. Same thing with the trees, blocking the wind from the other direction. It's also facing south here, and that's something we can think about. So they'll get the sun for the most of the day. That's a good thing. So you're suggesting a hive right up against the fence? Yeah, the fence will add extra protection as well. So I like this spot, it's good. It's your house, what do you think of that location? I think it sounds great. Well, let's get the hive and get started. Let's go. All, All right. right, here's your block. Great, let's put these cinder blocks with one side on the brick. Place it down here. This is creating a bit of an angle so the rainwater falls right off the hive instead of in it. It also elevates the hive to prevent the wood from rotting. Jamie, why don't you bring that bottom board over here? All right. We'll place it right on top of these cinder blocks, and then we'll put the hive body right on top of that. We're working with a Langstroth beehive today. The measurements haven't changed since the 1850s. Oh, great. Pretty simple pine box, but it has mortise and tenon joinery on it. Yeah, if you wanted to make this uh, at home on your own, you just get a flat piece of wood and then butt them together at the corners. Mm -hmm. um, we can put it right on top of the bottom board. You'll notice there's only one opening here, and this will create a flight path for the bees. Oh, so this is where the bees will come in and out. That's right. We will be creative about where we point that and thoughtful so that the bees are going outside one way. What's next? Next, we'll install the frames and then the bees. I can't wait. All right. Okay, so these are the frames. They are. They're made out of beeswax and wood, and they hang in here just like a filing cabinet. And they're held in place by bobby pins? Yeah, you know, whatever works for stability here. <laughs> So it does literally hang just like in a file. It right does. Like that. Yeah, go ahead and place them. They'll hang by these rabbit ears and the bees will build their comb off of that. So these are new frames and if you got access to it like we do today, it's always good to give them a little bit of a head start. So these are some frames from healthy hives that are built out and the queen can start laying eggs in these hexagonal comb and they can also start storing honey in here. Mm, so what are the different colorations of the different spots. So here we've got an orange that's stored pollen and then next to it there's some shinier stuff and that's the nectar. That's their sugar or carbohydrate source. It's their stored food so it's their balanced diet. So like a booster kit to get going. Yeah. Let's place these in here. All right, Jamie, here are your bees. Great. Yeah, we've got a three pound package of bees here. This is what people can order from a website and get delivered as a, a buzzing package at your local post office. A oh. buzzing <laughs> package, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's what you start a hive with typically. So that's a lot of bees. How many bees are in there? There are about 10,000 bees, give or take a few. It's a three pound package. Now, how big will our hive become? So we'll start with these 10,000. The queen's gonna lay about 1,000 eggs a day, and in the peak of summer, there could be about 80,000 bees. Wow, one queen. One queen. She's busy. <laughs> Indeed. That's good big queen. <laughs> <laughs> So next we're going to spray them down with sugar water and this is going to help them stick together like a fluid and they're stuck with their own food so they'll actually lick each other clean afterwards. So we're going to spray a little bit of sugar water on the front. We'll also spray some on the back. As you can see they're cuddled together in a cluster here. They do that for warmth. So now that we're finished spraying them down, what I'll do is ask Jamie if you could hold the spray bottle. We'll take this top wooden piece off Pass that over, thank you. And I'm gonna give him a little tap down and take out this can, which is a feeder while the bees were in transit. And I'll trade you back for this wooden piece. All right, so we're gonna pull this queen cage out here. She's blocked in here by candy. It'll take the bees about three days to chew through this candy and release her. So why is she separate? Why, why are we keeping her separate? We're matching this queen with unrelated worker bees. And if we just put the queen in there without a cage, they could kill her. This keeps her protected. They can get to know one another through the screen. All right, so now that we've removed the cork, we're starting the clock for when the bees can start chewing through this candy to release the queen. We'll also install the hive with the candy side facing down, starting with the queen being placed in the middle here. Next up is the fun part when we're gonna shake the bees in. So maybe take a few steps back. Oh, let's right, get gladly. out of range right now. So to install the bees, I'm going to give this package a tap and then I'm going to remove this here to help the bees calm down inside 
and I'll give them a pour, like a fluid, right inside the hive. Oh, look at that. Wow. Look at him go. All right, so now that most of the bees are out that we can get out, we'll place the package to the side. So we'll use this other tool called the bee brush to help push the bees inside so that they don't get squished. And then we'll place the inner cover right on top to help the bees go into the hive and get settled. And you can see the queen cage is right in the middle. All right, so now that the bees have settled in a little bit, we're gonna add what's called an internal feeder. So I'll start by lifting up this internal cover here. And then I'll use my hive tool, which is another common beekeeping tool you can get online. You can even use a screwdriver. We'll move these frames over and I'll place inside this bucket feeder. I'll fill it with sugar water. How much sugar do you add? We follow a common saying, actually. It's a pint to pound makes the world go round. So that's a pint of water to a pound of sugar. Wow, that's a lot of sugar. They need it. They got a lot of work to do. So this is the only time you'll have to feed them? That's right. We really only feed them when they're newly established and they don't exactly know the lay of the land yet. So for the first day or two, Jamie, they'll be flying around in circles looking for the flowers. And then once they find the pollen and nectar, they'll no longer need the sugar water to feed on. There we go. We'll just finish off by putting on the internal cover once more and then we'll put the outer cover on, and we're done. Simple enough. This protects the hive from rain and keeps them safe and sound. So the last step here is I'm gonna put this rock on top of the hive. This will add some weight and prevent the covers from blowing off in high winds. What happens to all the bees left in the package? These bees are gonna make their way into the hive in the next couple days. So Jamie, what I'd like for you to do is recycle this package afterwards. Also, check in, make sure that the queen has been released from her cage, so it should be empty in a few days. Okay. And then in a month, add a second box, the same type of box with the same frames. A month after that, add a third box. Send me some photos and we can keep talking about preventing disease, other beekeeping topics. You'll only have to check in about once a month. All right, sounds good, but I have a really important question. When do we get to eat the honey? <laughs> Over the next few months, they'll be making honey, and then by late summer, early fall, we'll get our first harvest. All right, sounds good.